All right, let's get started. Hey, chess.com fans, uh, thanks for watching this video. This is from my 2024 chess.com daily chess championship that you see here on screen. I am Johnny, not John. Shout out to JB. If you're looking for his YouTube channel, head over somewhere else. You're in the wrong place. But this is Johnny from the state of Minnesota calling in. And thank you to chess.com for making this possible. All right. So I, I had a couple of cool games. I just want to show you one of them really quickly because from the moves I made, they're very, very basic. I'm a beginner player. I just enjoy chess. Chess is therapy for me. And chess.com makes it possible to do that both on web and mobile, the pretty cool interface for an old guy like me. So this is really cool. So I'll review one of the games. And what I'm thinking about is the Toyota Life game. I have it prepared. But just in case you don't know anything about those daily chess tournaments, they happen, I think, once a year from uh, chess.com. And for this tournament, I was in a 12-round uh, uh, first round group, 4,632. This is how many groups are out there. So I was round one, 12 player round. It was half half uh, looking at the board in here. There are a lot of players who actually did not play and some of them played the first move and totally abandoned the round. So you can see all the way up to here where you start to really play some games. And I think I've probably played, yeah, five or maybe six players out here. And uh, I had a yeah good time all, over, overall. It's pretty cool. So yeah, I'm a, I'm a basic player. I don't study chess. Don't beat me on that. I'm too old to remember anything. But yeah, this is really cool. And I'm enjoying it. So let's go ahead and re review a game with Toyota Life. GG Toyota Life. Thanks for the game. We're going to get famous. Yes, let's go for it. All right. So let's get started. I, I think on my analysis, when I analyze this game after, I got 86.5 and... Toyota Life had 77.1. Uh, it was a decent game, but that one blunder. I blundered according to the engine, and I just want to show you that blunder. Towards the end, it actually worked out. <laughs> this is one of the things is if, if you're a beginner and you're playing a beginner, blundering may end up being okay for you. So let's check it out. Okay. I'm white, and my opponent is black. Oh, God, look at that. The engine says I'm already plus 0.17. Yep. Somebody says life is equal. Nope. Here it is. The engine says if you're white, you start with 0 0.1. All right. Here we go. I started with an E4. Now, this is a book move. Hey, right? That's that's a good sign. You start with a book move from, from here. So E4. I like to play E4 when I want a balanced game. I'm feeling okay for the day. The weather is nice. I play E4. All right, my opponent does a C6. Now, C6, I think this is Kara Khan. I think, yep, here it is. The engine says it's Kara Khan. All right, here we go. Who plays Kara Khan? Gotham Chess, maybe. Okay, so C6 in here. I'm like, yep, I've seen that before. I'm like, well, I'm going to take more from the center. D4, another book move, and boom, D5. This is great. I'm like, I'm going to move my knights, develop. I've seen this before. It should be okay, right? Perfect. I develop my knight to c3, my opponent. Okay, here, I've seen all sorts of moves. I think I've, I've had opponents where they moved here. If I advance, then they move back out here. I've seen those moves, of course, but I usually I stop to advance. That's a wasted move of the pawn. I'm not going to do that. So if my opponent had moved here, I'm not going to advance. I probably develop another piece. But they did not. Uh, so they they went ahead and moved the pawn in front of the king. And I thought this was fine. Yep, this is good. Opening up the bishop, coming back in here. So I started to think about just in case my opponent does that. All right. I took. Did not want any more pressuring pawns right in the middle. I wanted to take just in case if my opponent takes with this pawn. Then I have this line open towards the king. But my opponent did not do that. He took with the C pawn. That's perfect. Okay, that's fine. Develop pieces. 
know, it's one of those things. Get your pieces out, castle, feel good about life, right? Okay, so here we go. I develop my piece. My knight is out. This is good. He develops his knight to knight c6. All right, so the engine says, well, instead of the pin, get your dark square bishop out. This could be a good, uh, good thing for me to remember, I think, because of the square. That could be it. Taking this here. Uh, and then getting uh, really control of the uh, the, uh, the e5 square. But hey, um, I think I wanted to do that. I was I was eyeing this square, but I didn't do it right away. Okay, here's the bishop. My opponent goes to d6 with his dark square bishop. I think he, he had the same ideas. He or she had the same ideas. You don't want my knight out here. That's fine. Getting ready. I castled. Got his knight out. And then I moved my rook to e1. So rook f to e1. I do this a lot. I do this a lot in my games. I think I want to give my light square bishop an option to retreat if necessary. I probably didn't need to do that since my opponent uh, closed the light square bishop. So that light square bishop isn't coming in. But hey, I like options. Options are good. Space is good for me. So I, I felt good about this game. And this is why I moved this rook over here, from here to here. Okay. Engine says otherwise. All right. My opponent castles. All right. Now I use the dark squares. I go ahead and pin my opponent. He lets me know, do you want to take or do you want to retreat? I retreated the bishop. Normal, average moves. I don't think anything here is crazy. So here, I don't know if I'm my... If I am in my opponent's place. I don't think I would have retreated that knight. Uh, opened up to the light square bishop. Uh, the reason is because I would probably take, and that's what I did. I took, you know, the screw up with the pawns, got the pawns doubled up in here. So this is why I took. But then again, I was thinking, oh, maybe this is not a good idea to open up this line. But anyway, I took. My opponent takes with the G pawn. And then I was I was starting to think, yeah, I probably got I probably got some some attack. Oh, that's a drunken bishop. Uh, getting some attacking ideas up this line. All right, here we go. My opponent wanted to get some more protective, get uh, some pieces around the king. So I think that's why they moved the knight over there. And I said, well, I'm sorry, light square bishop. I hate to lose you, but guess what? This bishop isn't doing much. I want this piece off of the board in front of the king because I'm starting to think I want to get my rook out here, get the knight somewhere here, get this knight back. Oh, that's that's not good. Here we go here. I'm too old, confused. Get the knight up here. So two knights, the rook coming over. I might have a chance to win. So I took the knight out. All right. Here we go. Move the queen up. We all know what's going on in here. I thought, hey, you know what? I'm going to, you can't protect the spawn. You have to move the king. Where are you going to move the king? That's a good question. And also I was starting to think I'm, I might end up sacking this, uh, you know, this, this, this knight for some pawn or two in here. So I, I've started to have those ideas. King moves. Now, I thought this was a good move. Okay, move. That's what I would have done. I expected this is to happen. I didn't think, but the engine says it's an inaccuracy. King seven is best. So king f7 is best. I don't know why would you block, but maybe to move the king out of the way. Could be. All right. Danny, let me know. Okay. Here we go. Potting up on that pawn, everybody. And here, we, so here... I did think that, you know, I didn't play this knight without knowing that this is going to happen, but it weakens some squares. So like it weakened the dark squares in here. I have another clear line of sight, right, to get to the king. So this is fine for me. So I provoked that move, went back to f3, and now I'm starting to eye this uh, oh, again. I don't know how to use this. I'm too old. Get these knights over. Get this knight over here. I got some really cool ideas. Brings the queen over, attacking the bishop, very, very standard moves. Here, I also wanted to provoke and really move my pawn to c3. I want to protect this. But I said, hey, let me do something, provoke the move, get my, you know, get, get some initiative, get some movement. And that's what I did. Bishop retreats, and boom, I got my perfect square for my knight. 
He says, what are you doing with that night over there? Well, I was thinking of coming here. That would be nice. And that's what I did. Boom. So I've got, this is attacked. That's for sure, right? Now, this would have been a better move, I think, by my, my opponent, but he did not do that, right? Uh, so he went in with the with the rook. Now, I started to think about, well, if I take this bishop, I have this square to free right here. So then I can come back out here, bring the knight back here. This is good. This is really cool. I really like the knights being out there. Uh, so that's what I did. And I took the bishop out. Even though that bishop is not moving anywhere, etc. That's really was my idea. But then I'm like, ah, oh, of course. Not going to move this rook because he knows he or she, but move this rook over. So that's a good move by my opponent. Good take. All right. Now I wanted to expand some more. We're still good. It's all normal. And now I wanted to kick that bishop out. Yeah, just don't be on this diagonal. Go somewhere, but hey, that's fine. I had an idea here. I forgot, and I'm too old. Okay, so I moved my my queen over. Um, the only reason I moved my queen over, I think, is I wanted to protect this pawn from a different different square. I did not want to be in here anymore. Uh, I wanted to give my knight some space, bring some pressure to this pawn in here, double up in here, also hit this. Uh, Hit this uh, square up here, the spawn. It's only protected by by the king. But again, you know, they could have moved this. Anyways. All right. They doubled up on that. I doubled up. The pawn moves forward. I thought that was a weakening move. Uh, you guys tell me. All right. So here we go. See the engine thinks exactly. Yeah, bring this back. Okay. Normal, normal. Okay, here we go. That's what I was thinking. Doubling up, getting my and here, right about here, you all. This is why I wanted to make this video because blundering a piece. All right, I'm gonna sack the knight in here. So here, I started to think about clearance. Yeah, clearance. Look what just happened here. I have this queen eyeing the spawn on g5. If I if I get rid of this knight, if you're Grandmaster Ben Feingold, you can do anything. You can just just move this knight somewhere. Just take it off the board. You're fine. All right. Anyways, but you'll you'll okay. That's not gonna happen. Okay. So I have clearance over here, and then right here. So that's really the whole idea. Is look at that. If I get rid of this knight, what happens? Well, I can take this pawn, and takes with a queen or something or whatever. No, he's not going to take with the queen. I take this pawn. The queen can't go anywhere. You're going to lose your queen. So you're going to move somewhere else. And that's what I did. What I did is I sacked the knight. I cleared the knight right here. And my opponent took it with the rook. I had the opportunity. Boom. Hit the queen. The queen can't go anywhere. And that's all I calculated is, hey, at least I'll win two pawns in front of the king. Right? Boom. Entered with the queen with a check, right? Uh, this is no good. That's a checkmate right here. Uh, you can't go anywhere else. So either there or what are you going to do? Yep, right here. So the king goes back to F1. And then all of this I calculated here. I'm like, king is going to, that's the only square. And then I'm just going to win the queen. And that's what ended up happening. I block with the queen. Queen takes rook, queen takes queen with a check. This is taken. King can't go anywhere. King can't go anywhere. King can't go anywhere. This is the only square. That's what happened. And I chased it. And then there's a couple of ways to actually uh, with a mate. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Blabbered here a little bit in there. But thank you to chess.com for... Uh, letting us do this and submit this over and hopefully uh, you laughed a bit and and learned something out of this this basic basic game so shout out and uh, go chess.com thank you bye